Today I'm going to show you this kind of classic caramelly smoky look from scratch. Please skip forward so you can see what a transformation it is today because my skin is really flared up at the moment and I've kind of pulled together lots of questions that have come in and answered quite a few of them in the video and a lot of it is kind of eyeshadow basics so hopefully I think you'll really enjoy. As always everything I've used is listed in the description in the caption of the video but please remember that every single step you can substitute with whatever you've already got in your makeup bag it's not about going and buying loads of new things. I'm going to do a smoky eye look today for you Claire and then Mama Roo you wanted to know how to stop your eyeshadow from creasing so I'm kind of going to merge the two with this first step and use an eyeshadow base. Um, this one is from NARS and it's tinted however if you have a concealer and a bit of powder or just you know with every step that I'm going to show you today feel free to use whatever you've already got to you know prevent the need to go and buy something new. But basically, for you, Claire, if you're going really, really smoky, sometimes it's better to um, <laughs> poke yourself in the eye with the brush. No, sometimes it's better to do your eyes first so that if you get any drop down, you can just wipe it away. And I feel like it also gives you a bit of freedom to really go to town with those eyeshadow colours. Also, if you have any kind of oil through the day, having something like this that's velvety or as I say a bit of concealer and powder as your first layer just means that that shadow is less likely to kind of fall into any creases. I'm then going to use my liner before I do any eyeshadow just so that um, I can really pull the eye if I need to and then I'm not disrupting any eyeshadow to do that. Um, there is a much easier way to apply your liner which is that you can kind of um, put the liner on the waterline, close your eyes and run it back and forth. But I wear lenses, so I can't do that. So I just pull the eye a little bit and make sure I get the liner in there without going onto the lens. Okay, Chickster, you'd asked me how to apply and blend eyeshadow properly. And one of the things I like to do is almost start the blending before I've got as far as the eyeshadow. I'm gonna use one of these um, blending brushes. A really key thing with having a really smooth eyeshadow is having some kind of fluffy brush. And as I say, with some of these steps, I bet you've got something similar at home. Um, this is one of the new Morphe brushes. They have this whole range of new vegan brushes that are designed to essentially be kind of pro makeup artist shapes. Really lovely collection. And then I'm using a little bit of MAC Soft Brown through the socket, which for me is kind of a colour that would be a few shades deeper than my complexion, the kind of thing I might use as a bronzer or contour shade. But for you, whatever your skin tone, I would say find a colour that is a few shades deeper to replicate this step. Now what this kind of helps me to do is create a soft framework for how high I want my eyeshadow to go. And also gives me like a framework of, I want my deepest colour to go here today and then soften and blend out into nothing. Then I'm going to take a slightly flatter brush and my deeper shade and I'm going to start to press this all the way along the eye right the way up to the crease. And this is where things can get a bit messy and you'll be really glad that you um, didn't put any foundation on yet. Speaking of that, um, I actually felt really self-conscious today. My skin has really flared up and I was thinking, oh gosh, will I just do a bit of base first? But a couple of things. First of all, I think lots of people's skin will flare up this week. And second of all, um, I wanted to show you this makeup that I'm going to do. I had headshots taken this week and this is the makeup that I did for my headshots. And um, I arrived with full makeup on. And the girl that did them for me, absolutely lovely girl. I can't recommend her enough. I can't wait to show you the pictures, actually. I've got one of them, which I'll put here so that you can see. Um, she basically said something about like, oh, my skin looks really fresh or something. And I was like, you'd be surprised. I've just got loads of makeup on. And she couldn't believe it. But I just wanted to show you that if your skin has flared up or you want to achieve full coverage or something like that, you can. Like, it's all very well when we see, you know, lots of finished pictures online. By the way, while I carry on, I'm just going to use a clean brush to blend between these two colours. 
Um, but however you wake up with your skin looking today, I'm going to use a slightly denser brush actually, maybe a little MAC 217. Um, you can achieve a completely flawless finish and I'll show you that as I go along. Um, but as well, I just think I am really lucky. I've got such a lovely, you know, group of people that I chat to on here. And sometimes it's the, the one where you think, oh gosh, I don't know if I've like got it in me to put myself out there looking like that today. That'll be the one that someone wants to see. So now, do you see there? I'm going to go back to the original soft brown brush and just make sure that the edges are soft. Um, but how nice and soft and smoky that is. Now, another thing, Susanna, um, by the way, while I tell you this, I'm just going to match that colour up under the eye. Um, you'd said to me, like, you know, you're struggling to do the eyes and what have you. I would say, and it was really interesting having this for a photo shoot, you can go a little bit higher with your colours than you realise because by the time I smile or like when I've done my full makeup and have my mascara on, it will probably be more obvious. You'd be amazed at how much you kind of lose these colours and at the moment it feels really full. And so I think sometimes, in particular, if you're maybe dealing with more of a hooded eye or eyes that have dropped slightly or anything like that, um, put a tiny bit more on and it feels like loads. I mean, right now, this looks so out of place with the rest of my face. But by the time I've put the rest of my base on, this is going to end up feeling really soft. You won't believe it. OK, to clean it up, I'm going to use a little bit of the La Roche-Posay Micellar Water and one of Sally's reusable um, cotton pads. These are really good because once you've used them, you can just uh, throw them in the wash and use them again. Much more kind of sustainable and affordable in the long run than buying uh, cotton rounds. And I'm growing my eyebrows out at the moment, so I'm going to do the rest of my base and then come back to them. Now then, you know what's coming now, the lifesaver. I'm going to use the It Cosmetics CC Cream in the shade Light Medium. And I'm just going to use a really soft touch with this, especially because I'm so red. I don't want to rub this all over the place to the point that I've rubbed it off before I've rubbed it on. I just kind of want to layer it and leave it alone. Um, full disclosure, before someone points it out, I'm in between tan days, so this is way too dark for me, which is why I'm wearing a polo neck today. <laughs> I know that that isn't the way we're meant to do these things, but do you know what? Again, a bit like my philosophy with, I didn't want to put my skin out there, but someone will need to see it. I know full well there'll be someone watching this thinking, will I do that as well? So there we go. Now, Pauline, you'd asked me about how much powder to use. And I would say, under normal circumstances, use as little as you can get away with just where you need it. So on an average day, I'm using a Peaches PC03 brush and the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores setting powder. I would take this anywhere where I tend to get oily or sweaty. Um, anywhere that redness tends to show through, and in particular around the mouth area, um, it makes sense that this is kind of where there's a lot of movement when you're talking through the day, and so it's most likely to kind of have your product move around. So, and by the way, I'm using the lightest touch. I don't want to lift anything off, but I just want to lock it into place. However, Georgia, you also asked me, um, how best to layer things and you said for example can I put a powder blusher on a creamy base now if you're going to layer powders on top of this like I am I would take a really soft layer it doesn't have to be a lot but we kind of want to give a velvety veil of this all over so that when you put your powders on top of this it will just glide as opposed to um like the powder that you're putting on, catching on the dewiness. And another thing, speaking of layering, um, I'm going to use the French Boutique Blush Brush from It Cosmetics. Um, let's say my brows, that I'm going to put a creamy gel on. By the same logic, I need all of my powders to be on in that area, so that by the time I press that gel on, um, it's not going to disrupt anything or like it's going to be the final step because if I were to put this over the gel 
it's going to press it and move it. So I'm just pressing on a little layer of bronzing powder. Bless you. I'm using um, Watermelon from Laura Mercier. This is one of my favourite new launches, like in years. Um, I used it on a bride last year. It's so pretty. It's a very soft, silky blusher, but it has a bit of luminosity to it. But this is my personal favourite. If you didn't want to, you wouldn't need a highlighter with that as well. Okay, Dominique, I loved this one. You asked me for highlighter application that looks natural. I would say to you, use a small fluffy brush. I'm going to put a tiny bit through the brow bone. Now, in theory, this isn't necessarily the best idea, given that I'm growing my brows and <laughs> it's going to draw attention there. But I just want a tiny bit to pull together the fact that I'm going to put some on the cheekbone. But rather than going all the way down, I'm going to do a little dot. This is a technique that I saw on um, Chris Cortez's TikTok page. He is an Australian makeup artist. I've got a few of the Aussies over on TikTok and I tell you what, they're fantastic. Um, but he said the dot technique will catch the light, but it won't look too over the top. Um, it's a bit dull today, so I don't know if you're getting the full effect of that, but it looked... When I show you the pictures of this shoot, you'll see kind of a better idea of what it would look like. And it looks really pretty. Okay, then with a really soft touch, I'm going to use a tinted brow gel. This is from Maybelline. Um, and I think when you're growing your brows like I am, I've been growing them for, I don't know if it's four or five weeks now. Um, go with the fact that they're like a little bit bushy. And so I'm just using like these tinted gels and things a lot more to go for the whole aesthetic rather than like... As much as I am still using my pencil, I'm even changing the way I use that because otherwise it's really obvious that you've got like your normal brow shape and then a load of regrowth. Okay, I'm going to finish up with some mascara. This is the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. This is a tubing mascara, so if my eyes are watering, which it feels like that one is, um, this won't run. And then to finish off, I'm going to use a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Liner and I just feel like I'm going to um, add a tiny bit of pencil through those brows. There we go. And then I'm going to finish with a nice nude lipstick. Side note, I ordered this because it's the lipstick that um, Alex Babsky used on Florence Pugh when she rocked up to the Don't Worry Darling premiere. So I just thought that is so sassy and I bought it. Um, as well, side note, my friend Laura literally has a backlog of reels, TikToks, everything. If there's a moment that everybody loves, like, I don't know, Rachel McAdams lipstick in the notebook she loves, um, she'll find out exactly what it is and give you a breakdown. And she put a video up the other day of the £9 mascara that Florence Pugh loves, things like that. Um, you'd love her videos. And speaking of Florence Pugh, I'm actually going to watch that now with my best friend, Don't Worry Darling. So I will love and leave you. And just a quick one I wanted to mention because I've had like some lovely messages and things recently. Um, if I haven't been putting my videos up as often, I absolutely love doing them. This is my favourite hobby, my favourite thing to do. Um, I've just been a bit busier with other work things at the moment. Usually how I do these videos is if I'm working from home for the day, I will film my video in the morning, do my work. And then once I've finished, kind of sit on the couch and edit it and put it together. But I've been travelling a lot for the last few weeks, so I'm not at home. To, like, I'm usually throwing some makeup on on the train or something. Um, but I'm not going anywhere. It's just been a bit of a busier patch. Um, and I love doing them, so please don't worry. If I go quiet for a few weeks, that's all it is. But thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely weekend. If there's anything in particular you want to see, feel free to let me know. And I'm really grateful for all of those questions as well. They really help to give me a good idea of what you want to see. And I can't thank you enough if you send them in. Um, I write them all down or I screenshot them on my phone. So thank you. Every comment or bit of feedback just um, really keeps you going. Like I am literally sat in my living room at the moment talking into my iPhone completely. Do you know what I mean? It's easy easy to forget that there's anyone on the other side so it always gives me a real boost if you let me know what you want to see um but thanks for watching have a lovely weekend and i'll chat to you soon